day. Thanks for stopping by. It's a beautiful day out. I hope you're having a great day. So, we're going to pick up um, where we left off the other day. And um, Debbie and Alan were talking about moving near the beach away from um, Alan's parents. And they're preparing for the weekend for the for the show. So, um, Marie, my brother Alan had lived in the house behind Mama and Papa for two years. But when he drank, he was a different person. And that caused friction between he and Papa. Um, him and Debbie fussing and fighting. There was just too much going on, and my parents were too close and could be all up in his business, you know? So, um, he and Debbie had moved to an apartment building not far from the ocean, just a block from the, from the lake also. Monica and myself now lived in the house he had moved out of. We told you we were a close family. Well... It was time to start getting ready for our hair show. It was good. I had moved. It was actually more convenient for us. I had more space here to spread out all the things we needed for the show and setting up hair dryers and things like that. Okay, Leah, let me start with your head now. You have that super fine hair that might need a little extra Marie said, a little extra what? Leia said, you know your hair, a little extra anything and everything, Marie replied. Leia had already washed and set her hair. She and I both were beauticians and had gone to um, cosmetology school together. I was fantastic with chemicals on hair and she was a super with haircuts. I had told her the other day to set her hair with beer that would make it hold better and it's a great conditioner because of the protein. She had done as I had told her so her hair wasn't hard to work with. I just applied quite a bit of hairspray to keep it in place. First of all, by the time we stopped running our mouths and eating, it was almost 3.30. That, that, um, that brought us to 4.15, and I had three more heads to style. Everything they were wearing could be put on without messing up their hair and makeup. I moved on to Deja's hair. Leia had cut Deja's hair short. It was black, shiny, short, and sassy. I styled it with a full crown and tapered real quick at the nape of the neck. I moved on through hairstyles with an ease, styling, spraying, and gelling. Paula had a sharp shag with a bang, pumped and teased at the top to be more exaggerated and dramatic. Trina had really healthy looking black hair. But I had styled dark brown, I had styled a dark brown wig with highlights to bring out her eyes and fantastic features. I finally got myself together last, but not least. Six o'clock, we headed for the convention center. That's where the show was going on later. We joined a bunch of other women and men that were getting ready for the show. Once we arrived, we got dressed and there were a few makeup artists there to help with the makeup. It had to be applied very heavily so it would show up on the stage with the bright lights. I enjoyed the excitement that came along with these shows. The lights, the music, the people running all over backstage, the overdone hair and clothes. 
the hum, the vibe from the audience. Before we realized it, the seats and tables were almost filled up. And the show was about to begin. One of the partners named Anthony that had asked me about being in the show came over to speak with me. So I'm thinking he's just going to he's going to talk to me about something pertaining to the show, which he did mention. But he wanted to talk to me in privacy tomorrow, he said. I agreed to meet him for lunch. As the night went on, I kind of felt he was keeping an eye on me a bit more than the other models and stylists. And yes, I played up to it a, a tiny bit, enough to interest him, but not enough to be obvious, you know? You know how we do it. Besides, out front my boyfriend was there. After all, the strutting around on the stage and backstage, we went out to mingle with the guests. I walked over to my brother, Alan. I told him that he and Judy looked so cool. I went and gave Marvin a kiss. I hadn't seen him in two weeks. Just as I stepped back to let him check me out up close, Anthony joined us, saying he didn't mean to interrupt, but he just wanted to thank me and my models for doing such a great job. Anthony spoke to each one of us while talking to me and the models. Marv went to, to the bar to get me a drink. When he returned and handed me my screwdriver cocktail, it almost seemed like he did it to get my attention. I acknowledged him and thanked him as we continued to talk, the whole group of us. Then Anthony excused himself and continued to mingle with everyone he came across. The music had gotten some people on the dance floor. I went to dance with my cousin that was visiting from Baltimore, and we were doing our thing. Afterwards, we turned to the area of tables our group was sitting at. They were having a good time. We could tell because the laughter was so loud. I'd say it was about half an hour later when I made it to the dance floor again with another cousin. When Anthony showed up dancing with someone, nice looking girl next to me. After two songs, he asked me to dance. Yeah, I did. He was fine. I was having a good time and wasn't hurting anybody. As we were dancing, he placed his hand on my waist. I felt another hand slide around my waist, starting from my back and sliding around me to the side of my stomach. Oh, it was Marv. He asked Anthony if he could cut in. Anthony was like, sure, and flashed a big, bright smile. As Marv and I danced, I glanced Anthony checking me out every now and then while I was on the floor. And I began to think Marv was checking him, checking me out. So Marv mentioned to me about Anthony seemed to be interested in me. I was telling him, yeah, he really seems to like my work. Marv was like, it's more than your work he's interested in. Stop it, sweetie, I told him. Now go on and shake shaking that ass for me. I said to him, he just laughed and spun around in front of me. And he really did shake his cute little ass for me. And I reciprocated for him. Now I could feel Anthony watching. And somehow I picked up on his feeling of not liking what he'd just seen. I acknowledged to myself that he was attracted to me now. And no, I hadn't told Marv about the lunch meeting I have set up with Anthony for tomorrow. I figured that went out by tomorrow morning. Really, I don't know what this guy wanted to speak with me about. I did recall Leia and my mother. I did um, call and tell Leia and my mother about the meeting um, in the morning before I left. But don't get me wrong, I'm independent and I do what I want. I just don't want to hear no mouth from Mar. And don't 
and don't want no pounding or attitude. He's good for pounding. As the night went on, and we were having a really nice time and mingling, while Marvin and I was dancing, Anthony had gotten behind me on the dance floor. We all were working up a nice little sweat out there. As one song ended, Marvin left the dance floor and went to our table. That's when Anthony got too close for comfort. He had his back to me. His butt had rubbed up against mine. Not on purpose, I think, just a crowded dance floor, you know? Then a minute later, I felt his front rub up against me for a split second. Again, a crowded dance floor. So I turned this way and danced for a minute. I turned his way and danced for a minute. Then back to the other guy I was dancing with. There were some people that had joined the grooving. Now this time, we danced and he bumped me, but this time I could feel something hard rub up against me. I felt his hardness for a second or two before I realized and admitted what it was. I moved away from him a bit, not making any notice of what had just happened. The next song came on and we were, and we continued to dance. when I felt him rub up against my hip. He was doing this on purpose. I knew now. I made an excuse to leave the floor, and as I was headed for our table, Marv was approaching me, looking unhappy. I thought to myself, oh shit, it's about to be on in here. Please, not now. Marv said he was ready to go. I just said that was that was fine, and I was tired myself. We went to tell our people we'd catch them in the morning. I didn't dare ask him why he wanted to leave. That would allow a can of worms to get loose. We walked to his Cadillac in silence. The sky was pitch black, and the stars were so bright. Once inside the car, I started to try to say a few words thanking him for his coming and being so supportive. He, at the same time, was telling me how much fun he'd had and how we looked like pros up there on the stage. When we arrived home, I was so glad to be there. I was really, really tired and a little bit tipsy from the drinks. I had quite a few of them. Monica was at my uncle's for the night, which was good. I was tired, but not so tired Marv and I couldn't get it on. Anyway, the next morning came. By the time we started out, uh, we stirred out of bed. It was close to 11 in the morning. Marv said, I have some bad news. I guess the look on my face looked too upset. He said, not bad like that. I have to leave in about an hour or so. Got to get back to Boston today. But I couldn't miss the show last night. Is that okay with you? I was like, um, you are just the sweetest man I've ever seen. You came all the way down here just for that. I would have understood if you hadn't come, I told him. I got up and I cooked breakfast and made some coffee. I wasn't a real coffee drinker, so I made enough for him, and I had orange juice with my food. We were eating like we were starving. Shit, I felt like I was starving. I had made a large breakfast just as we were finishing up our plates. A cousin came came down the stairs to go to the bathroom. My cousins had stayed out later than Marv and I. He looked like he was worn out and hungover. Good morning, were exchanged. And when he came out the bathroom, got a plate and a cup of coffee and joined, and joined us at the table. We talked about the night before, how much fun we'd had, and now how hard Jay had partied. 
Around noon, Marv excused himself from the table and went back upstairs to get his things. When he came back down, I walked him out to his car, gave him a kiss, and told him to call me when he got home. That way, I'd know he'd arrive home safely. I walked back in the point in my place and told Jay I had an appointment this afternoon, actually in a short while, and to help himself and I'd be getting ready for this e- for this meeting. I couldn't believe things had worked out the way they did. I didn't have to tell Mark about this lunch meeting. There's really nothing more to this than business. Anthony just had, yes, too much to drink I'm thinking last night. Then I thought to myself, maybe I should get a drink before I I, uh, meet up with Anthony. You know, a little something to loosen me up. While Jay was talking to me and another cousin who had entered the kitchen, I then went into, I went into my walk-in pantry to get a bottle of vodka I had on the shelf to mix with some orange juice. Anybody that came to my house knew to make themselves at home. So they were moving about the downstairs, getting breakfast and talking. As I entered the den, I turned on the stereo and put on an album. A little something, you know, a little bit to make the air mellow and to keep us at ease about our upcoming day. With my folks, a night of partying would turn into a weekend of partying, for sure. Not that we had anything special to do this day, but after partying last night, some relaxing music um, to give you a little groove, but keep you feeling kind of low-key. I called to my cousin Jay, who was at the kitchen table. Here's something to help you. Before I could even finish my sentence, he called back to me. I don't have no hangover. And we'll stop there. But you know, once they say, I don't have no hangover, they have a hangover. So, thank you guys for stopping in. Drop me a comment. Let me know what's going on. I do thank you for stopping in. You have a great day. Don't forget to love yourself. Make time for yourself to do something that you like. If not every day, at least once a week. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. And peace and love. If you do get the notion to like or subscribe or drop me a comment, I would greatly appreciate it. And again, I thank you for stopping in and you have a great day.